Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing the Stand with Trans Kids book tag. I saw Leo at Leo Bancroft had just created this tag and it seemed like such a wonderful one, so I wanted to go ahead and do it as well. Question one, tag some fabulous friends who also may want to do this tag and stand with trans kids. So this tag is all about showing your love of trans books and supporting trans kids. And I think that everybody should do this if they have any interest. So uh, if you're watching this, I tag you. Question two, tell us about some books on your TBR pile featuring a trans or non-binary character or nonfiction about trans non-binary stuff. So checked out from the library right now, I have two books that would fit this. The first is Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This is a new romance release that is all about two people who are competitors on a baking show that fall in love, one of whom is non-binary. I love baking shows and I love romance novels, so I'm really excited about this one. The other is Fierce Fens and Notorious Liars by Kai Cheng Tom, and this is a autofiction, so sort of a, a fictionalized memoir uh, that I heard about from Leo, and it just sounds like it's kind of fantastical and maybe surreal and wonderful, and a memoir uh, fictionalized, and that just sounds like a lot of fun. Question three, recommend a favorite book, show, or movie featuring a trans or non-binary character. So Leo already mentioned two of my absolute favorites that are in SFF, Light from Uncommon Stars by Dee Aoki, as well as Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. These are both fantastic books, but I wanted to mention two romances that feature trans characters that I really loved. The first is For the Love of April French by Penny Ames. This is a contemporary romance that is all about uh, bondage, so kind of BDSM, um, for a trans woman and a, um, a black guy who meet at kind of like a, a kink club and decide to have a relationship with each other. And their relationship is just as much about the kink as it is about them um, kind of learning to trust one another and be vulnerable and, and open themselves up. It is actually an incredibly beautiful and emotional story. And I just, I really, really loved it. Um, the other is The Craft of Love by E.E. E. Ottoman, which is the gentlest, sweetest romance. Um, it's set in the 1830s in New York, and it is about a silversmith who's a trans man who ends up commissioning um, kind of a quilt from a local quilt maker, and they end up forming this partnership and, and falling in love, and it's just so gentle and so sweet. And both of these, by the way, are romances that I'd heard about from Kazen at Always Doing, who's a great source of romance recommendations, so I'll link her below. Question four, everyone has their own journey and no one demographic is a monolith. Recommend a book with a journey, however you define that. For this, I'm gonna say The Map of Salt and Stars by Zane Jokadar. So this is a book that actually I have started a couple of years ago, but I had to pause because I ran out of time and I've been really wanting to get back to. So hopefully this will give me the motivation to prioritize that. This is such a journey book though. So it is a dual timeline. It takes place in 2011, as well as in the 12th century. In 2011, we follow a teenage girl who moves to Syria with her family, where they're from, uh, only for, you know, kind of civil war to break Break out and they end up as refugees traveling around sort of the Mediterranean. Uh, and in the 12th century, we follow a teenage girl who really wants to become an apprentice to a map maker and so dresses up as a boy in order to do so and travels around the Mediterranean. And so this is about these two teenage girls having these journeys, um, but also about the connection across the different centuries and about displacement and about finding yourself. It just, I really, really liked the beginning of this and I really want to continue. And I think that it's a great book about a journey. Question five. None of us knows everything, even about our own identities, especially since we're not a monolith and each have our own journey. What's a book that taught you something either about yourself or the world around you? For this, I would say Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. This is a book where Gawande talks about what it's like to make decisions concerning the care of an elderly uh, relative. So a lot of us will have to go through the process at some point in our life of giving care and making decisions for an elderly relative who maybe isn't able to take care of themselves anymore. And in this, Gawande talks a lot about that balance between your desire to um, kind of keep 
keep your relative safe, as well as their own desire for independence, and really talks about what that means and helps you work through that. I thought that this was incredibly helpful. Um, a lot of us will go through this process at some point, and being able to have some introspection into what we want and what we care about, and really what we want for our own care when we get older as well. I mean, it was just really, really helpful, and I thought this was wonderful. Question six. When things are hard in the world or in our lives, sometimes there are things we can do to help center and refocus ourselves, to bring joy, to keep us going, to keep living, resisting, being our authentically amazing selves. What are things you do to center yourself or find joy? There are a couple of things that I do to center myself and find joy. The first is going on walks in nature. I absolutely love walking in nature. I love the trees. I love the bird song. It is just one of the best things to do to kind of keep calm and feel good every day. So I love going on walks in nature. Uh, the second thing is games. I love playing games. I love playing board games. Uh, my husband Sush and I play a lot of games together. One of our favorites is Gloomhaven, which is kind of like D&D in a box absolutely love it and we play quite a bit of video games together as well my absolute favorite is stardew valley which is one of the gentlest most wonderful games i absolutely love it uh, and then obviously reading i love to read and especially romance and middle grade are just so excellent for when you need some sort of comfort read and i definitely turn to those all the time Question seven, what's your walk on music or your feel at home in your body music? Recently, this song for me has been Surface Pressure by Jessica Darrow from the movie Encanto. I think this song is so wonderful and it just gets me so pumped up every time I listen to it. Question eight, finding mentors, people of wisdom or heroes can be another way to help us navigate life. Who are some of your mentors? Can you share something they taught you or inspired you to learn more about? I've had a lot of wonderful mentors in life from professors to managers, but I think that my top mentor is probably Sush, my husband. Um, not only is he just a wonderful partner, but he's also really a great role model and mentor as, as I try to grow as a person. Sush is just the best person, period. I really think he's absolutely wonderful and he's just so kind and patient. Um, and those are things that I really want to work on myself. I get impatient and frustrated very easily and I get just very dismissive. And so I think that from just watching him and learning from the way that he uh, interacts, the way he's so patient with everybody, so considerate and kind, I really have learned a lot. And I just find myself constantly inspired and growing because of uh, his mentorship and, and just his presence in my life. Um, and I know that, you know, we both treat each other as kind of our, our support system and that person who's in your corner helping you do whatever you want to do. So I really like that kind of um, way that we lift each other up to, to be whoever it is we want to be. So he's very much my best mentor. Question nine, who are some out trans or non-binary booktubers, Instagrammers, authors, actors, etc., who you'd like to shout out? So booktube is the thing that I am most into, so I will shout out a couple of my favorite trans and non-binary booktubers, starting with Leo, uh, Leo Bancroft, the person who made this tag. So I think that Leo is an incredibly kind and compassionate and thoughtful person. He makes really wonderful videos. He's constantly uplifting different uh, nonprofits. He's reading great books, love his focus on SFF as well as nonfiction. So I I think he is a great booktuber to follow. Uh, obviously, Audrey at uh, Perpetual Pages is a wonderful non-binary booktuber, and they are just such a great resource, especially because they read a lot of middle grade, and I love middle grade, so I always look for what they're picking up. And um, Rogan at Rogan Shannon, who is one of the hosts of the Queer Lit Readathon, um, they are non-binary, and they do also a lot of work around uh, deafness because they are deaf and they they do um, deafblind interpretation. So yeah, they do a ton of great work around disability as well as around excellent books. Really, really love all of the books that they recommend. Question 10, what are some organizations you'd like to shout out for supporting trans kids and trans folks? 
So what I'd like to do is actually shout out some publishers that I think are doing really great work when it comes to publishing queer lit. Um, and in particular, I think that Tor.com is doing a great job if you like SFF. Um, and they've got a really great series, the Ten Servet series by Neon Yang, who is a non-binary author. Um, there's also Levine Querido, which is amazing. They do kid lit, so everything from picture books through YA. And they're really focusing on trying to get as many voices as they can. They have an upcoming book called The One Who Loves You the Most by Medina, which is all about um, a, a kid who's growing up and trying to understand their gender. Uh, so I think that really I want to support the publishers who are publishing the kind of books and authors that I want to read. And so I think these two are great if you want to look out for more trans books being published. Okay, so that's all of my answers for this tag. I'd love to hear what your answers are, if you have any favorite books or authors or booktubers or anything like that. Also, if you're interested, please do the tag. I think it would be wonderful for more people to do the tag, and I'd love to hear your answers. If you have anything you want to chat with me about, just go ahead and leave me a comment down below.